we are going to start in child's pose. Uh, so I know sometimes that's that can be a lot to the hips and knees. So if you want to gather up any pillows to put behind your knees or in front of your chest, you can do that. Um, so as many props as you need to feel uh, comfortable in child's pose, um, grab those things so that you're prepared and know that if child's pose, you're like freaking out. I don't do child's pose. I can't get in that position. No worries. You can start in a seated position. All right. All right, welcome everyone. It's a small class today. All right, we are going to get started. So make your way onto the mat into child's pose. So child's pose, knees out wide is going to be a hip stretch. Knees together is going to be more of a low back, mid back stretch. So lots of ways to um, modify this, add props behind the knees so that your knees don't have to flex as much. You can also add padding underneath the knees. You can also add a pillow underneath your chest to drape onto and that kind of makes less hip flexion there. And then if you can get into this child's pose without too much props, but it's your head that doesn't quite meet the mat, a block can come in handy so that you don't have to hold tension in the neck to have your head draped down. Okay. So as everybody finds a comfortable position, now if child's pose isn't going to work for you, you can find a comfortable seated position, preferably sitting on something so that you can feel grounded through your hips and buoyant through your upper body and chest. Let's begin class by taking a couple of cleansing breaths together. So let's exhale all of our air out and meet at the bottom of our breath. Seal the lips, inhale slowly all the way to the top. Hold that tension at the top for a moment. Open mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Release tension as you do so. Seal the lips. Inhale through the mouth or through the nose slowly, fully, all the way to the top, holding that tension at the top. And then again, sigh it out, release tension, drape towards the mat twice more on your own, sealing your lips, inhaling slowly through the nose to the top, holding at the top, sighing it out, releasing tension. One more on your own. After your last one there, seal the lips and just begin to cultivate that nice full breath. So filling up the lungs completely and emptying them completely. Allowing a few breath cycles to really bring that fullness to your breath. Eyes are closed and set your internal dristi, that gazing point between your, your eyebrows, so your third eye, just to anchor the mind space a little bit. And then using your breath to cultivate your presence in this moment. Each of you made time to come to your mat today. And the work we do on our mat is monumentally important to our being and how we progress off of the mat. So allow this time to be yours. Know that I'm here to guide you, but if anything needs to be changed or altered for your body, know that you have permission know that you, it is acceptable to uh, change you know, my guidance as we move through our practice today. A couple moments of silence to start our practice as you 
tether the mind and body with your breath to help illuminate your soul. For those of us in child's pose, tent your fingers so that only the fingertips are on the mat and your arms come up off the mat. Lift your head and chest slightly, walk your hands to the right, pick the chest up, the chest and belly, and set it down on your right thigh as you walk your hands to the right. Then take your left hand and overlap it onto your right. And then allow your head to drop through your biceps for between your shoulders. And then experiment here, looking underneath the left armpit. And then maybe looking under the right armpit. And maybe those both feel great, in which case you can kind of pause in both positions. But if one serves you better, hang out there in that one gazing point. If you're seated and child's pose is not working for you, you can just come into a side bend. Okay, so dropping one arm, letting the other come up and overhead. Create those nice full breaths here, really opening up the intercostal muscles between the rib cage, ribs. Tent the fingers once again walking through center all the way to the left now. Pick up your chest and your belly, laying it down on your left thigh. Take that right hand, overlap it onto your left, and then let your head grow heavy. And then again, experiment with that gazing point, either under the left armpit or maybe the right. Experimenting with both. And then either going through both of them and sitting there for a bit with the, each of those twists or finding one and settling in there. Find those nice full breaths, opening up the intercostals between the ribs and keeping that right sit bone anchored. So really trying to push that right sit bones towards your heel. And then come up onto those fingertips, walk through center, plant the hands, and come up into tabletop. So make sure you've adjusted your alignment, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. We're going to do some circles over our hands, but before we do, I want you to pull your shoulders down the back and pull your belly button up and in so that you've got some structure to work with. Okay. Now let's add movement. Circling around to the left, moving your weight forward, really gripping with your fingertips, shifting to the right, and your hips can also kind of shift as well. Now shift your hips back as you push down through your hands, moving to the left. So we're just making circles over our hands in a clockwise manner, nice and slow. Just feeling what it feels like to shift your weight in different directions. Let's do one more circle oh, clockwise and then we'll change our direction. Feel free to make these as big or as small and nuanced as you like. And then again, let's go counterclockwise. So now we're just going the opposite direction. Nice and slow. Keep with those full breaths. Let's do one more. And after that last one, coming into stillness, neutral spine, shoulders down the back, belly pulled in. So find that engagement and hold. So belly's pulled in, shoulders down the back, just holding that engagement. Building a little bit of heat here in the core. And now meet me at 
the bottom of your exhale, so all your air out. As you inhale, sag the belly, push the hips back, broaden the chest, look up, cow. Exhale, round the back, tuck the tail and chin, cat. So inhale, sag the belly, broaden the chest, push the hips back. And then exhale, rounding the spine and tucking the chin. Keep moving through your cat and cow, connecting breath to movement. One more of each. And then coming into that neutral spine, Shoulders down the back, belly pulled in. Inhale the right arm up, look up as you do that. Exhale, thread the needle underneath your left arm. Reach and look, we're gonna keep this dynamic. And then inhale, back up. Look up, reach up. Exhale, thread the needle, reach underneath that left arm. Drop the shoulder a little bit. Coming back up, inhale, look up, reach up. This time as you exhale and thread the needle, let your hand, shoulder, temple come down to the mat. Now there's a couple things you can do with that left hand. You can keep it on the mat where it is. You can reach it forward on the mat, straight arm. Or you can bring it back behind you and reach for that right thigh into kind of a half bind here. Wherever your left arm is, I want you to really reach your hips to the right and feel that stretch along the back of the shoulder, or maybe even into the mid back. Tap into those nice full breaths, sort of investigating what the breath does in a position like this. Release the left hand if it is moved away from the mat by your face. Anchor that left hand. Inhale, sweep that arm one more time up and look up. And then bring the hand down to the mat. Let's switch sides. Inhale, left arm up, look up. Exhale, thread the needle, reach and look. Again, inhale, look up, reach up. Exhale, thread the needle. One more time. Inhale, look up, reach up. Get that twist. And now exhale, thread the needle. Lower the hand, shoulder, and temple. And then again, that right hand can stay put right where it is. It can reach overhead onto the mat. Or it can kind of, it can find that half bind. So reaching back behind and trying to get that left um five with your right hand okay. now push the hips to the left and open up that back of the shoulder maybe into the mid back and then find those nice full breaths and just feel how that sort of feels in this twisted position If your right hand is moved away from the mat next to your face, replace it back. Push firmly through that right arm. Inhale, look up, reach up, look up. And now bring that hand to the mat. All right, we're gonna tuck our toes, lift our hips, and then little baby steps to meet your hands. Feet can be touching or they can be hip width. Inhale, lift the spine, lengthen the spine, bring the hands to the shins and pause here. Feel your sit bones spread apart behind you, okay? Shoulders pull down the back, radiate through the crown of the head. Inhale here, exhale, forward fold. Now, Heel toe your feet if they are not already hip width apart. 
nice generous bend in your knees so much so that your shoulder your chest and belly can rest on your thighs ragdoll pose your hands can be on the mat they can grab opposite elbows or you can sweep them up behind you interlace and see if you can get them to fall forward as you forward fold wherever your hands are little shake out of the head, yes and no. Just letting your neck let go and feel that traction. Wherever your hands are, bringing them back to the mat. Heel toe your feet back together, toes and heels to touch. Inhale, find that lift and lengthen through the spine, spreading of the sit bones, shoulders pull down. Exhale, tone the belly, forward fold. This time on your inhale, bend the knees, sweep the arms up and over to standing. Look up, watch your hands connect. And then exhale, bring them down through heart center, pausing here for a moment. Lift your chest to meet your thumbs. Bow your chin and close your eyes for a moment. I invite you to set an intention for your practice today. Directing your energy somewhere specifically or inviting a particular quality into your practice today. Just another tool to help us stay present and work introspectively. A couple of nice full breaths to seal that in. And we're gonna warm up the body with some sun salutations. We'll do half sun A, and then we'll modify sun A all the way through. All right, let's begin. Inhale, sweep the arms up, look up. And then exhale, dive forward with a flat back, bend the knees as much as you may need to a forward fold. Inhale, find that lift and lengthen, hands to the shins, radiate through the crown of the head. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up and over, watch some connect extended mountain. Exhale, dive forward with a flat back, bend your knees as much as you need to, tone the low belly as you fold. Inhale, lift, lengthen, reset your spine, spread your sit bones. Exhale, fold and tone the low be belly. Inhale, sweep the arms up and over. We've got one more of those. Exhale, dive forward, bend the knees as much as you need. Forward fold. Tone that low belly, let the head be heavy. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Sweep the arms up and over on your inhale, watch them connect. Exhale, bring them through heart center, pausing here. Moving on, adding on. Inhale, sweep your arms up and over, look up, watch them connect. Dive forward, flat back, bend your knees, tone the low belly. Inhale, lift and lengthen hands to the shins. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, lower the knees, and then lower the chest nice and slowly all the way to the mat. Inhale, press through the hands, tone the glutes, lift the chest, cobra. Exhale, push yourself through tabletop, tuck your toes, and a brief downward facing dog. If you'd like to stay in table or maybe find more of a puppy dog pose, that's fine too. Wherever you are, bending the knees, looking to the hands, and walking your feet up. Find an exhale here as you forward fold at the top of your mat. Inhale, lift and lengthen, hands to the shins. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up, look up, watch them connect, and on your exhale, we're diving forward, moving on. Tone the low belly, fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, plant the hands, 
step back, pause here, lower the knees if you need to or want to, exhale, lower all the way down, nice and slowly to the mat, inhale, cobra, squeeze those glutes, lift the chest, exhale, push yourself through all fours, tuck the toes, and find downward facing dog or your sort of interim position. We have one more of Sun A. On your inhale, you're gonna look to your hands and bend your knees if you're in downward facing dog. Exhale, find your way to the front of your mat, hands meeting, feet meeting hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen long through the crown of the head. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up and over. Look up, watch them connect. Exhale, dive forward, forward fold. Inhale, reset the spine, lift and lengthen. Exhale, plant the hands. Step back, plank or knees down. Exhale, lower yourself down all the way to the mat. Untuck the toes, inhale, up, cobra. Exhale, come through all fours. Downward facing dog, puppy dog pose, child pose. Pausing here. We're gonna do one more travel to the top of the mat. So prepare yourself on an inhale, and then an exhale, walking your, hand, your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen, spread the sit bones behind you. Exhale, fold. Pausing here. Now, heel toe your feet out wide, as wide as your mat. Have your block handy, okay? Toes are gonna be pointing out heels in. Drop your hips, malasana. All right, we've just warmed up, right? We've done our sun A's. Now we're asking our hips to come into this position. Now, if you're like, whoa, I can't get there, or this is really hard, a block really comes in handy. Place it under your sit bones. Remember, a block has lots of different heights, so you can, you can take it all the way on the top height, and find this sort of upright position in malasana. Okay, so block, add it, use it, okay, or not. What I want you to find is that ability to lengthen through the spine. So your sit bones are pointed down, your feet are anchored into the ground. Perhaps you've got your elbows on your inner knees to help give you just a little bit of leverage. You won't be here for too much longer. Find your breath. Be in this posture. Especially if this posture, this asana is difficult. A couple more breaths. Release your hands to the mat. Lift your hips back up. Heel toe your feet back together. Inhale, lift and reset the spine. Exhale, plant the hands. Step back, lower the knees or not. On your exhale, lowering all the way down. Inhale, sweep the chest up. And then exhale, all fours. And a brief child's pose, pushing your hips back. Stretch, stretching your arms up in front of you and have engagement in the arms so your elbows are up off the mat all right inhale lift up come through table push the hips forward and the chest stays broad exhale push the hips back into child's pose so we're dynamic child's pose here inhale lift up through table all the way through push the hips forward tone the glutes Strong through the arms. Exhale, to, uh, child's pose, excuse me. And one more, just like that. Inhale yourself up. Tone those glutes as you push your hips forward. Broaden the chest. Maybe look up this time. Exhale, child's pose. Good, come on up to tabletop. 
and take a moment, make sure your hands are underneath your shoulders, knees are underneath your hips. Okay, pull the low belly in, pull the shoulders down the back, so find that structure. We're gonna do what's called fire hydrants, or good hip stability muscle engagement. So belly's pulled in so you've got that structure to keep your hips square to the ground. Lift your right knee, with your hips square to the ground, your belly pulled in, lift your knee without opening your hips. Range of motion probably won't be a ton here. And then release it down. If you need a little break, set it down completely. Otherwise, keep it lifted and use your exhale as you lift your knee to the side. It's like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant, people. All right, lift on your exhale, pull the belly in, shoulders down the back, keep the hips square to the ground. We're gonna do two more. Exhale, lift. Keep those hips square to the ground. One more. Okay. Now you can stop, put the hips back, come onto your elbows and just roll out your wrists. Just give them a break for a minute. Okay, coming back into tabletop. Staying with the right leg. So find all the parts of that stability through the core and the torso, shoulders down, belly in. Keep the hips square. Lift the, the leg, the right leg out behind you and bend the knee so that your foot is pointing towards the ceiling. And now lift that leg just a little bit. Keep your hips square. Keep the belly pulled in. Little pulses here. These are donkey kicks. They're using the bigger glute muscles and your hamstrings. Exhale as you pulse it up. That'll help keep the belly in. Just tiny little pulses. Two more. Good, release that knee down. And again, you can let those hips come back, bring the elbows to the ground. And just give your wrists a break for a moment. And then coming back into table, now we're going to put those two things together, okay? Pull in the belly, shoulders down the back. Now lift and find fire hydrant. Now rotate that knee back and find donkey. And now pull that knee in, find knee to nose. Good. Back down, find fire hydrant. Pulling that hip, that uh, knee out to the right. Find donkey, knee to nose. So we're doing circles here with the hip and knee. Back to neutral, one more time. Fire hydrant, donkey, knee to nose. Good, release down. Let's switch sides, okay? So pull the belly in, shoulders down the back to find that structure. Lift the left knee and open up to the left, keeping the hips square to the ground. And then release down. Use your exhale to lift. We're working stabilizing muscles here for the hips. Exhale to lift, we're gonna do one more. Now you can put that knee down, shift the hips back, elbows down, roll out the wrist. You can even interlock, interlace them and kind of roll them together. All right, plant the hands back up into tabletop. Hind donkey on the left hand side, so or the left, uh, the left leg. Shoulders down, belly in. Lift that leg, bend the left knee, foot flat on the uh, ceiling, and then little little lifts. Use your exhale. Maintain that structure in the torso. The belly pulled in is gonna help that back to not arch. We don't really want the arching of the back. We want the glute and the hamstring to be working here. Let's do two more. And then letting that knee come down. Now we're gonna put it together. I'll turn around. Okay, so pull the belly in, shoulders down the back. Lift the leg, find fire hydrant, but don't open up the hips. Transition that knee back and find donkey. Now, knee to nose. 
back underneath you with that knee and find fire hydrant. Donkey, knee to nose. Finding neutral with that knee. Again, fire hydrant. Donkey, knee to nose. Good, releasing that knee down. Now, turn your hand so that your fingertips um, are back towards your, your knees. And then slowly let your hips become heavy towards your heels as your palms slowly peel up off the ground all the way to the fingertips. Good. And then put those hands back, tabletop position, belly in, shoulder down the back. Release your right leg out to the right. Sole of the foot down on the ground. Take your right hip and push it down to your left knee. That's gonna create a big stretch on the inner thigh. You can have a little bend in the knee if needed. Keep the belly in as you push that right hip bone down to the left knee. Breathe here. And we're gonna transition now into a half kneeling position. So however it works for you, that right foot is gonna come up to the outside of your right hand, okay? Have some width between your front foot and your back knee. Pull the belly in and come up into a half kneeling position. Good. Tailbone down the back, down to, stretch it down towards the, the mat. Pull the belly in. Inhale, sweep your arms up overhead as you shift your weight forward. Hips should be square to the front of your mat. Nice stretch through the left hip flexor in front of the hip. Grab the left wrist with your right hand and lean to the right. Keep your chest open and up. Get that left hip to kind of maybe shift a little bit to the left. And your gaze can be down if you, if, if you are sort of balancing and sort of wobbly, or up. If you go up, it'll kind of help your chest stay open. Good, releasing to center here, release the uh, wrist, and then bring the hands back behind you and interlace them behind you. Once you've got that interlace, stretch your knuckles down towards your back leg and puff out that chest, Maybe a little back bend as you shift your weight forward and look up. Good. Coming back to center, releasing the hands from behind you and bringing them to the mat on the inside of your foot. Coming back into tabletop, setting up your hands and knees, and then moving through some cat cows. So just connect to that breath again. Be present in your body as you articulate spine and hips and skull. And then pausing with a neutral spine. Let's switch sides now. Left leg comes out to the left with your sole of the foot on the ground, okay? Now take that left hip and push it down and in towards that right knee on the ground. So opening up your inner thigh, bend the knee if you've got a lot of sensation in the knee joint, bend it just a little, like make it a little soft, but keep that pushing down of the hip towards the knee. Find your breath, maintain the shoulder blades down the back. All right, you know where we're going next, right? We're taking our left foot, however you can, getting it to uh, the outside of your left hand, and then coming up into that half kneeling position. Tailbone stretches down towards the mat, belly pulls in, your hips square to the front of your mat. So left hip pulls back, right hip pulls forward. Arms inhale up over as you shift your weight forward, getting that nice stretch along the left, the right hip flexors. Now grab your right hand with your left, grab your 
right wrist with your left hand and lean to the left as your right hip kind of pops out to the right just a little bit. This is really good for the uh, whole side body, but also down into the, um, uh, I'm blanking on the, <laughs> I'll come up with it. I'll come up with it in a minute. <laughs> I'm sure if you guys were unmuted, you'd have it for me. Coming back up to center, releasing the arms, interlacing back behind you, and then stretching those knuckles down towards your leg behind you, shifting your weight forward a little bit, keeping your hips square, and then a little bit of arching, a little bit of a back bend as you shift your weight forward, stretch your knuckles down, open your chest, and maybe you look up, coming back into center with the hips, releasing the hands back down to the mat and finding tabletop and cat cow. So use your breath to move through a few cat cows. All right, we're almost done on all fours, I promise. Right leg stretches behind you with the toes on the ground, okay? You're gonna keep your left hand anchored to the ground. You're gonna open up your hip as your right heel grounds to the ground. And then you're gonna open up that right hand. And your right hand can be on your hip if you feel like coming all the way up here is too much. If you're here, maybe experiment with raising that bicep and reaching forward with your right hand and your left foot is actually reaching in opposite direction. So feel that opening between the uh, rib cage and the hips. And then coming back to a T if you've raised your arm and then slowly rounding the chest and the hips coming back onto that toe, finding tabletop. Switch sides, left leg out long, toes down. Open up the hips as you ground that left heel, opening up the chest and finding your full expression on this side. Take a nice deep breaths here. And then back to a T if you've raised your arm and then rounding chest and hips, coming back to the toes on, coming back into tabletop. All right, we're gonna lower all the way down onto our belly, okay? And stretch your hands alongside you. This is option A, right, to keep your hands here. We're gonna do locust next, or if you'd like to interlace, it's a little bit more of a chest opener, and then stretch the knuckles down. Exhale all your air out, your head is in the center. For now, we'll keep our feet anchored and our pubic bone anchored, tone the glutes. On an inhale, lift the chest, squeeze the glutes. The knees are off the ground, so pull the kneecaps up the leg, and then see if you can create a nice long cervical spine. Gaze is down the chin, sorry, down the nose. <laughs> And then slowly release. We're gonna do that one more time, but if you wanna let go of your inner lace and let one cheek to the ground. And just breathe here for a moment. And then centering the head, stretching the hands either by your side or interlacing them. This time, if you wanna lift your legs, you can do so. So exhale all your air out, inhale. Lift the chest, lift the legs, lift the arms, anchor the pubic bone, long through the cervical spine, gaze down the, the, <laughs> the nose, <laughs> and then slowly release, letting go of the interlace, opposite cheek to the mat. IT band, that's what it is. <laughs> Yay. Man. <laughs> All right, centering the head, bringing the hands back to either side of the rib cage, and then pushing yourself up through all fours. 
we're gonna come into a seated position. I'd like you to have something to sit on. It doesn't have to be big or lofty. In fact, just a little ledge of a folded up towel or a blanket will suffice. You'll sit on that. And then I want you to walk your sit bones all the way to the edge of whatever it is you're sitting on. So you're almost rocking off and it's gonna kind of rock your pelvis forward just a bit into a more neutral pelvis. Whatever you wanna do with the legs is fine. Just find that positioning where you feel very anchored and grounded through your hips and that allows you to be nice and open and buoyant through the upper body. Close down your eyes, whatever's comfortable with your hands, and just a moment of stillness to sit in our body here, reconnecting to our breath, allowing that breath to, to unite the mind and body, and letting our true self emerge, and then perhaps just connecting to your intention that purpose that you brought onto the mat today. Blinking your eyes open, bring your hands behind you. We're gonna go back into that interlaced position. So interlace those hands, stretch the knuckles down to the ground, pull the belly in, and maybe those hands, the, the fists, the knuckles can come away from the back as you look up. So there's gonna be a little arching in your low back, but try to mitigate that with the toning of the belly. And then allow your shoulders to really externally rotate and open the chest here. And then take some nice big breaths, just intensifying that openness. And then allowing the head to come into neutral, bending through the elbows, releasing that inner lace. Inhale, sweep the arms up and over, look up, watch them connect. Exhale through heart center. Again, inhale. Exhale. Keep going, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale twice more. Meeting in heart center. Again, inhale the arms up. And then as you exhale, bring the right arm underneath the left arm and wrap your arms up. Now, back of the hands might be where it's at. Maybe you can get a full wrap and get the palms together. It really doesn't matter. Just find that stretch and edge. Okay, now really anchor down through your sit bones, pull your belly in and lift your forearms up as you do all of those things there. Now feel the stretch in your upper back. So in this position, our shoulder blades are being pulled away from our spine. And I want you to pull your arm bones into the shoulder sockets, which is gonna bring your, your shoulder blades a little bit closer to the spine, just a little bit. Okay, so you're engaging the back just a little bit for some structure so that you can lift your arms up. And then grow tall through the crown of the head, Letting go of any tension right at the base of the skull. Let there be space between your teeth and let your tongue rest on the top of your mouth. On an inhale, unwind, sweep your arms up and pause here, letting your right hand come down to the mat. As you exhale, side stretch, reaching to the right. That right hand is a little bit of a kickstand. You can inch it out. You can even come down onto the elbow if you've got that room. Wherever you are here though, I want your left sit bone to be really trying to anchor that to the ground. Whether, you know, if it comes up off the ground, it's okay. 
I want you to just create that motion of pushing that sit bone to the ground. Okay. Your right shoulder, kind of be mindful where it's at. Okay. Coming back up to center, inhale, lift up, look up, and then exhale, twist, bringing your left hand to the outside of the right knee, and then that right hand transitions right behind the hip onto the ground. Keep the chest broad. Stay tall through the spine and twist along the spine. So try to have that spine be nice and neutral in its length. It's just a twisting motion. Shoulders pull down the back and then maybe completing that twist by looking over the right shoulder. And then again, you know, see if you can lift both arm, your hands up off whatever it is they're touching to see if you can maintain that twist. So you don't want to use the leverage so much. You want to use your core to help you be in this twist. It's an active twist, not a passive one. Let's everybody meet on an exhale. So nice and slow exhales. Maybe you twist a little bit more there. And then on your inhale, you're going to untwist, sweep your arms up, over. And then on your exhale, left arm is going to wrap underneath the right, finding eagle arms on the other side. So whatever you did on the other side, you know, you can investigate what works on this side. So pull the belly in, sit nice and tall through the crown of the head, and then lift your forearms up. And then pull your arm bones into the shoulder socket, which requires that little bit of engagement of pulling the shoulder blades together just a little bit so that you can keep your chest broad. Your gaze is, you know, ideally somewhere through your forearms. And then again, growing tall through the crown of the head, letting go of tension at the base of the skull. Letting there be space between the teeth and your tongue resting lightly at the top of your mouth. Exhale all your air out. Inhale, unwind, sweep your arms up. And then let your left hand come down on an exhale, leaning to the left. Remembering that that left hand is your sort of kickstand, keeping your chest up more than down. And then that right sit bone, anchor it to the ground. And again, just feeling that stretch and that sort of space between uh, rib cage and your hip. Inhale yourself back up to center. You can relocate that left hand back behind the left hip. Inhale, reach the right arm up and look up. Exhale as you twist to the left, bringing your right arm, right hand to the outside of that left knee. And then again, really sitting tall. Each inhale is sitting nice and tall. And then each exhale, maybe there's a little bit more twist. Perhaps the gaze rotates over the left shoulder. Keeping your nice full breaths here. Oftentimes in twists, the inhale takes you out of the twist just a little bit, and then the exhale pulls you back in. The little dance your breath does in a twist. And let's meet on the bottom of our exhale. So all your air out as you twist maybe just a little bit more. Your inhale, you'll untwist, sweep your arms up, look up, watch them connect, exhale down through heart center. All right, opening up your, your legs to a wide-legged position. How wide is, is really up to you. So you still want your hips to be in that neutral position so they're kind of rocking off whatever it is you're sitting on. Create some, some engagement through both your legs. So toes up, kneecaps up the leg just a little bit. Heels are pushing down just slightly into the ground. You have a choice here. You can either rotate your torso to frame your right leg and fold over your right leg. 
If you'd like a little bit more of a twist, you can bring your right arm on the inside of your right leg and then bring your left arm up and overhead. So you're gonna get a real sort of opening through the side body here. You're welcome to try both of these. If you're in this sort of side uh, stretch position, again, anchor the left sit bone into the ground. You'll feel sort of that opening in the low back, that space between the rib cage and the hip. If you're forward folding, you're committed to a long spine. Try not to round and really keeping that chest square to the leg underneath you. So either one. A couple more breaths, tapping into those nice full breaths. And then slowly coming upright and switching sides. So do whatever it is you did on the other side, but don't be attached. You can always do something different if something else is calling. So you're either doing that side stretch, bringing your left elbow inside the left leg, or you're folding over your left leg making sure your chest and torso are right over that left leg. Hang on to that engagement through both legs. So try not to let them go floppy. And then use your breath here. Stay present. Be mindful. Slowly coming back up to center and bringing the soles of your feet together, grabbing your ankles so that you can sit up nice and tall, shoulders down the back, belly pulled in. You can stay upright or you can find a hinging from the hip. And if you can hinge from the hip, your elbows can come to the inner knee, pushing those down as you sort of lead from the belly shoulders down the back. A couple more breaths here. All right, coming upright. We're gonna transition onto our back. So whatever it is you're sitting on, have that off to the side. Make sure your block and your strap are handy, okay? And then nice and mindfully, slowly lowering down to your back, pulling in your heels towards your sit bones. Setting up for bridge. Lift your hips up all the way. Invitation to either stay here or interlace the hands back behind you and then tucking one shoulder at a time underneath you. And then actively through your arms, pushing down into the ground to help your hips rise a little bit higher. Give a little squeeze to the knees so that those knees don't flare out wide. Slowly untucking if you went there and unlace, release the hands and then all the way down. All right. Bring the left uh, ankle on top of the right knee. Okay, we're gonna come into a figure four bridge. Lift the hips up. Right, so you're really squeezing through that left glute, keeping your hips square, actively pulling that knee down towards the ground. And then to keep your sort of, sort of um, footprint on the ground, take that heel and pull it in towards your body just a little bit so you're not pushing your, your, your shoulders away. And you're keeping that nice footprint. Slowly roll the spine down. All right, here's where the strap comes in handy. We're gonna do a figure four stretch. So that left knee is gonna come up. Wrap the strap around the left ball of the foot and then use the strap on the foot to pull that knee close to your chest. And it just really makes your, your arms a little longer and, and you have a little more control of the stretch. So that foot is right in front of the knee and as you put, pull on that the strap on your foot that knee is pulling forward and then actively bring that right uh, 
elbow to your right knee and push that knee away. Check in with the shoulders. You know, just release tension you don't need there. All right, releasing the leg down. You can just let the strap fall, coming into a supine twist. So let the knees fall to the left, opening up the arms, palms facing up, looking to the right. Keep your eyes open here and your breath full. So we're, you know, winding down a little bit, but stay present. And inhaling the knees to center, uncrossing the legs, left ankle on top of right knee, and then scooping up and finding bridge here with that figure four leg configuration. Finding that right glute, really toning it. Left knee actively pulled to the ground, hips are square. And then give that right heel a little pull towards the body. Slowly lowering down. And then you know where we're going from here. You're going to want to get that strap under uh, the ball of the foot on that right leg. And then pulling through the strap so that that foot pulls the right knee in. And then the left elbow pushes the left knee out. Check in with the shoulders and the breath. Just a couple breaths here. Just finding the stretch through the hips. And then releasing the stretch, letting the strap fall to the side and finding your supine twist other side, letting the knees fall, maybe looking over the left. Use that breath, tether the mind and body. Just a few more moments. Inhale the knees up to center. Bring the soles of the feet together. Supta Baddha Konasana. Allow the hands to rest anywhere that's comfortable. And now let go of your breath control. So let your natural rhythm take over. If you'd like to move straight into Shavasana, you're welcome to do so. Take a few moments in Supta Baddha Konasana to just check in, right? Let go. Allow your body and mind to transition. And then when you're ready, one leg will stretch out at a time and just finding that relief of tension into the mat, letting gravity sort of sandwich you into the earth. Again, letting there be space between the teeth. You're not holding tension in the jaw. And let's take a cleansing breath. Feel the lips. Inhale nice and big through the nose. Hold that tension at the top. Open mouth, exhale, sigh it out. To come to stillness, Shavasana.
slowly begin to make that transition back to the surface, maybe adding some small movements, deepening your breath. Whatever's calling out to you uh, as you transition yourself up into a seated position. So you can take a full body stretch, you can roll to your side. And then eventually finding that seated position, shutting down the eyes again as you come into your seated position and then joining your hands together and bringing your thumbs to your heart center, lifting your chest to meet your thumbs. Giving a little smile in honor of your practice today. Giving thanks and gratitude for showing up, being here, making time to do the work. Tapping one more time into that intention that you set for your practice. You set it because it was important to you. So know that that intention is welcome to follow you off of the mat and into your day. Bow the chin. The highest light in me sees and honors and respects the highest light in each of you. Namaste. All right, thanks guys. Good to see you, or sort of see you. <laughs>